Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial on GPGS. This time we're looking at the long-awaited save games functionality. Before we get stuck into it, I wanted to say that we're getting really close to our goal of 500 subscribers and this year I'm going to have a much heavier focus on content. So if you're watching this video and you've seen a few of my videos or even if this is the first one, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later if you lose interest. Okay, so save games is one of those things that's usually a bit of a jump for people in terms of skill level. So I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about what we're actually going to do with all of our functions, otherwise you're going to get to the point of finishing this tutorial and having no idea how to actually implement this in your project. The main thing that might be new to you here is the concept of callback methods. Put very simply, a callback method can be thought of as code executed after the current method. The main difference between adding a method at the very end of your current method and a callback method is that you have the ability to handle the result of your function. This is useful when you need to know whether the previous action was successful before continuing. A good example of this will be the opening of saved game files with GPGS. Before we want to read and try to decode the file, we first need to make sure that that file actually exists, or we need to throw an error because we'll run into errors in our code if it doesn't exist. That's really the most complex concept to grasp with save games, and the rest is just chaining this together in different callback methods until you've extracted and loaded your data. So with that out of the way, let's have a look at the structure of save games. We're going to be writing a few methods, so let's understand how they all tie together. As I said before, the first method that we'll be writing is the open save method. This method will be the starting point regardless of whether you're saving or loading your data, and we'll give it a bool in the parameters called isSaving to check if we're saving or loading. Let's take a look at the saving route first. OpenSave is going to have a callback method, which is going to ensure that we were able to connect to the cloud. If we can do that successfully, then we're going to put all of our game data into a byte array and try to save that into the cloud with a commit method. The commit method does two things. Firstly, it tries to persist data into the cloud, and secondly, it handles conflict resolution. Because we're saving data into the cloud, users are potentially going to be able to connect to the game from multiple devices, and if they do, we need to know which is the most up-to-date to save on. The phone that you just hit save on then, or the tablet that you left running a few hours ago. We're going to use a conflict resolution called Use Longest Playtime, which makes the decision based on the length of playtime of that save file. This is the simplest to implement, and in most cases it will work for you. However, there are multiple methods available to you, as well as the option to write your own manual method if none of them suit. After that point, we're going to get one more callback method, and that's a chance for us to log whether we were successful or not in saving the data or failed to do so. Now, there's going to be a few extra methods along the way here, because we're going to need to transform the data from whatever data type it currently is, be it a string for your character's name or an int for their lives, and then do a little bit of work to fit that into a byte array. That's pretty much it for saving, and loading is easier. Let's start with the same callback method, the open save method, but this time our bool flag is going to be marked with loading instead of saving. And once we get a successful callback method to say we've connected to the cloud, we're going to be using a method called read binary data. And that does exactly what it says it does. It opens up the save file and it tries to read the data. There's a callback method in there as well, which is just ensuring that it was able to successfully read the data. And then all we do is reverse what we did in the saving method. We convert the data from a byte array back into our game data types, and that's it. I hope at this point you're thinking, Flavien, that doesn't sound too hard, so let's get on with it. To which I agree, so I'll give you a swift second to hit that subscribe button, and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started with Unity, let's just open up our browser. We're going to go into the Google Developer Console. I'm just going to open up the project that I've got, and we scroll down to Configuration. And in configuration, we'll go edit properties here. And we just need to turn this save games flag to on. Very important, but very simple. So save that, and then we can close this down. That's all we need to do there. I'm going to now set up the UI that I want to work with in this game. So I'll just copy my leaderboard panel, and we'll just call this saved games panel. I'll set that one to active and we'll get rid of our sign in panel here. There's a few things that we're going to need here. We'll keep this log text area because we're still going to be using that. Let's put that down the side. Instead of post score, I'm going to have both a save game and a load game. So I'll rename this load game and we'll put load game there. I might call that load game button just to be consistent. And we'll call the save game button and we'll put save game in there as well. I might just make these a little bit larger because they don't need to be so small. 
Yeah, that's fine. We can get rid of this button here, but we are gonna duplicate our log text and just, I'm gonna create a separate area just for an output text, just so you can see sort of the, it saving and loading things. So I'll call this output text. So basically over here is gonna be all of our system messages. And then when you hit save, oh, when you hit load, sorry, it will then actually just load the, you know, my name is whatever and, and my age is whatever. So that's the data that we're gonna be saving here. So I'm gonna call this name input field. And in that placeholder text, I'll just say enter name. We'll duplicate that, drag it down. And we're gonna rename this one age input field. And again with placeholder, we'll just say enter age. Okay, that's pretty much our setup here. I might just clean this up a little bit so our buttons and everything look like they're in the right place. So we'll just drag our log text next to our output text, put our two buttons together and our two input fields together. Okay, that's looking good. <clears throat> I don't need this home button, that can disappear. Sign out button, still the sign out button. Okay, so that's our UI scene set up correctly for what we're gonna need. The one other thing I will say that we need to do here is just make sure that we get rid of these methods that were existing on the buttons. And that's it. Okay, so we're gonna open up our GPGS manager and we're gonna add two using statements to the start of this. Those two using statements are gonna be using Google Play Games dot basic API dot saved game. And the other one is gonna be using system. System is gonna be part of our decoding stuff. And obviously our basic API for save games is gonna have everything that we need for the save games. Next, we'll scroll down to where we've got our configure GPGS. Now you might recall in the first tutorial, I talked about how there are extra methods that you could have in this builder function. And basically all they do is set different Booleans to true or false. So if I just type dot enable, you can see you've got hide pop-ups, save games, uh, and there's a few others in there as well. But we're gonna be looking at enable save games and we'll add that to our method. I'll just put this on another line so you can sort of see each element that you've included. So what this is going to do is it's going to be returning a uh, true value to our builder for the save games. So it's saying, okay, now we are going to configure the game and include save games as one of the options. Okay, so we're just going to scroll down in this GPGS manager and we're going to create a new region because there's going to be a fair few methods inside of here. I just want to wrap them all into one nice little region area. It's just a way to group our code. So we'll call this one save games. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do in this area is create a private bool and we'll just call that one is saving. That one's gonna be used to determine whether we're saving or loading the game in our open save method. And that's actually the one that we're gonna write now. So public void open save, and it's gonna take a bool and we'll just call this one saving. The first thing that we need to do in open save is obviously make sure that we're actually authenticated. Otherwise we don't even want to attempt to open a save because you definitely wouldn't be able to connect to the cloud. So we've done this before. We just say if social.localuser.authenticated. So are, if we are authenticated, then what we want to do is call a method to try and reach the cloud and open a save file. Before we do that, I'm just going to say that is saving is going to be set to saving. So we know that whether we're saving or loading here. Okay, so now we're going to actually try and read a saved games file in the cloud. So to do that, we're going to need a play games platform reference, the social.active element, and we'll say dot saved game. We're going to be using automatic conflict resolution here and as opposed to manual it's just a bit more in depth and this will cover i suppose 90 percent of your cases really so you can see in here this takes a file name it takes a data source it takes the type of conflict resolution strategy you want and then it has this callback afterwards so we're going to open that up it wants a file name first i'm just going to call this my file name you could call this whatever you want i suppose the data source we're going to use a data source dot and we're gonna use the read cache or network only. So it will attempt to basically read a local cache first if it has one, and then if it doesn't, it will go to the network and try to read that. So we'll use that version. And then a conflict resolution strategy. So my conflict resolution strategy is going to be the use longest time. Now, there are a few other methods in here. There's last known good, use manual, uh, use most recently saved. Where I, th I think longest time is most reasonable here because it basically just looks at the biggest time file on there and says this must be the one that you've put the most effort into therefore it's the one i want to persist into the cloud 
So we're going to say use longest playtime. And then we have our callback method. So I'm just going to name this a method called save game open. And obviously that doesn't exist just yet. But if you click back onto it and you press alt plus enter, it brings up a generate save game open here. And this is quite useful because it gives you all of the arguments that you're going to need. So it creates the save game open method, which is good. And then it says the status. So we're going to just call this one status. So that's effectively, did it succeed or not? As well as the metadata that it's returning as well. So I'm just going to call that one metadata. We can get rid of this exception throwing. The first thing that we want to do before we proceed is we want to make sure that the status of this is actually successful because if it isn't, then we don't want to go ahead and try decode anything because it's not going to work. So we're going to say if status is equal to save game status request dot success. That means we successfully managed to pull back data. Then we're going to try to see, are we trying to save the game or are we trying to load the game? So we'll say if is saving. And in this case, we are saving. And then we'll have an else down here later where we'll say we are loading. And if we are saving, then what we want to do is we want to update what our metadata is. And we also want to actually try to commit a new file. So inside of saving, there's effectively three things that we're actually trying to do before we're able to properly commit a save. The first would be convert our data types to a byte array. The second will be update our metadata. And the reason why we need to do that is because the commit method requires you to give it some metadata. And then the last would be commit your save. So that will be where you actually save the data to the cloud. So we'll write this convert data types to the byte array a bit after because I wanna to chain together all of the callbacks first so you understand that process flow. And then we'll go back and write in the actual conversion of the data that we care about. And then we'll also add in some logging along the way so we can see how it works. Okay, so we're gonna start with our commit save. And you would have seen that inside of this method previously, we had a dot commit save. So we're gonna need to get that again. So I'm gonna say play games platform social dot active, say dot saved game. And we're gonna say commit update. And you can see in this commit update, we take a metadata, we take the update for metadata we take a byte array of data, so that's the actual data we wanna save, and then we have another callback method again. So we're gonna start with our metadata here. That's actually the metadata that we received in this callback method, so I'll just put meta. After that, we'll create a method from our update our metadata, so this is gonna be update for metadata, and we haven't written that one yet, but we'll add that in after. Then we need the data that we actually want to save, which is this bi binary data here, this byte array. So I'm just gonna call that one my data. We also haven't created that one yet. And then we're gonna have our callback for this one here, which is just gonna be save callback. And we'll close that one off. We obviously have a few things that don't exist yet, so let's now add our update for our metadata. So we'll get rid of this. So we're gonna create a new saved game metadata update and we'll call that one update for metadata because that's what I named it inside of here. That one's equal to a new saved game metadata update dot builder. And inside of that builder, we're just gonna be passing it a with description update. And this here is just a free text area. So I'm just gonna say, I have updated my game at, and then I might just put the time in it. So date time dot now dot to string. And then we're just gonna build it. So now I've passed in my update for metadata. I'm gonna skip over this binary data for now and we're gonna create our callback method for this. So remember again, when we're creating these, we just hit Alt and Enter and we're just gonna say generate method for my callback. We can see here again, I receive a status and again, I receive some metadata. So again, I'm gonna rename this one status. And again, I'm just gonna rename my metadata meta again. We can get rid of this. So at this point, I've actually tried to commit the update to the cloud. So what I'm getting in this callback method here is just the response of whether that was successful or not. So I'm just gonna check that. So if status is equal to that save game status request dot success, then that means I successfully saved to the cloud. So for now, I'll just throw that in a debug.log that says successfully saved to the cloud. And if I didn't do that, then I'll just put an else statement in here. And in that else statement, I'll just say you know, I failed to do that, failed to save to cloud. And that's really the full process of doing a save. So we start here with an open save. We try to open our file. We see whether there is a file existing and whether we can save. If we get that success back, we check to see, am I trying to save or am I trying to load? If I'm trying to save, then what I wanna do is create this metadata update just so we have a bit of metadata that goes with it. We convert our data to a byte array 
and then we try to actually commit that save. When that goes through, we then go, okay, cool. I've got the response of whether that's saved or not. I check to see whether it's successful and then I know whether I successfully saved or not at that point in time. We're gonna go now and create this byte array for data and then we'll look at loading and then we're pretty much done. Okay, so the reason why we left this one to last was because we haven't actually created any of the area to save any of the information. So before we go ahead and create this, we're gonna jump back into our project and in our project, I'm gonna create a new script and that script is gonna be called saved games UI. And we're just gonna open that one up. So inside of this, we're gonna be using unity engine.ui. And I don't really need a start method or an update method for this. And the only purpose of this here is to hold a reference to all of the information that we've created inside of this panel. So we're gonna need two text fields. We're gonna need an input field, another input field, and then we're also gonna save the int and the string of those values. So I will create a public string. I'll just call that name, a public int. I'll call that age. Then we'll create a public text. I'll call that one log text and another public text called output text. And then we want to reference to our two input fields. So public input field, and we'll call this one name input field and another input field that we're going to be calling age input field. So that gives us our data values. Obviously we need to assign them. So we're gonna use a method here called onValueChange, which is a built-in callback in Unity that is applied to input fields where you can basically, as a value gets changed inside of the input field, it will update a value or can call an update on a value. So we're gonna say public void onValueChange name, and that's gonna take a string that we'll just call field. And we're gonna say that name is equal to name input field dot text. And then we'll do pretty much the same thing for the age one, except this one's gonna be an int. So we're gonna to have to pass that in a bit differently. So this is gonna be our age one. And then we're just gonna say int dot parse, and it's gonna be parsing in that. And then we just need to make sure that this is changed from name to age and we get rid of our errors. And you'll notice that in the scene at the moment, I can't compile because it doesn't know what my data is. So we're gonna have to write some code and then we'll hook everything up. So for starters, we're gonna delete the comment we've got here. I'm gonna say that we have a private byte array and that's gonna be called my data. And my data is gonna be equal to system.text.asciencoding.ascii and then .getbytes so we're trying to get the bytes out of a string and that string is just going to be called get save string. Okay, so let's create public string get save string. And because it is a string, that means it returns a string, which means we need to create a string in here. So I'll say private data to save. This is going to be the data we're actually trying to save, obviously. And we're going to return data to save at the end of this method. So that gets rid of all of our compile errors. Obviously we're not actually returning anything just yet, but we'll create that now. Okay, so remember the string that we actually wanted to return here, the final output is gonna look like this. That's what we're aiming for. So we're gonna get that from our save games UI. So I'm gonna just grab a quick reference to our save games UI up here. So we're just gonna create a public saved games UI and we'll call that saved games UI. And now we can use that down here to get a reference. So down where we're creating our string, we're gonna say that data to save plus equals saved games UI dot name and then data to save plus equals. And we just wanna add a pipe here because we're gonna separate this. And then data to save equals our age as well. So saved games UI dot age. Now that's effectively gonna output this when you try to print that out which means that we're now passing that back and we're putting that into our byte array. Okay, so now we've completely finished with our saving of the game. We now wanna get our loading of the game working as well. So just remember here that we start off with an open save regardless of whether we're trying to save or load. And we pass that is saving into an is saving variable, which we then check to see on the response, if it's successful, are we trying to save the game? So in this case, we're trying to load the game here. So again, I'm gonna get the same reference that I had before but this time, instead of trying to commit a save, we're going to be using a read binary data. So we're gonna be trying to read from the file that we have. And if we open that up, you can see that it requires some metadata as well as a callback. 
So we're going to be using the metadata that was passed to us from that callback method. And then we're going to have a load callback. Again, this callback doesn't exist, but if we click on it, hit Alt and Enter, and we generate this method, you can see here that it's got a status, the same as we're quite familiar with at this point, as well as a byte array. So it's returned to us a byte array. And obviously when we were saving, we were giving it this byte array, but now we're receiving that byte array and we need to convert it back into the strings and data that we know. So we're just gonna change this one here to status. And then we're gonna change this here to data because that is the data from the cloud. So we'll do our normal check. If status is equal to save game status success, that means we have successfully read the data and we've created this byte array of data. So in the past, we had a byte array that we created and we passed a string to it and we stored it in that byte array. Now what we're gonna do is we have a byte array and we're going to be converting it to a string. So we'll say string loaded data is equal to system.text.ascii encoding.ascii and dot get string. And we need to be getting the string out of the data that we have up here. So that'll be data. Now remember that right now, what we effectively have received from the cloud is this. So this is clearly not what we're able to display on the screen because it doesn't know that age is an integer and Flavane is a name and the pipe means nothing. So we need to create a method that is going to convert that back into the data that we actually want. So we're going to create a method here called load saved string. And that's going to be taking in our loaded data. So obviously this load saved string doesn't exist yet. So we're going to create that now. We're going to create a public void load saved string. And that is going to be a string. And we'll call that one cloud data. Okay, so now we've got our cloud data. We're just going to split it into a string array. So we'll call this string array cloud string array. And that's going to be equal to the cloud data that we've downloaded. And we're going to split this. And the character that we're splitting on is the pipe that we got earlier. It's going to recognize that this character is not a character that's actual data. Instead, it's a point to split our array. So what you'll see is string, basically cloud string array zero is going to be equal to Flavane. And cloud string array one is going to be equal to the age I have, which will be 29. So that's effectively what I've stored inside of here right now, inside of this cloud string array. So all I need to do is assign this back to my name and convert this to an integer and assign it back to my age. And that's exactly what we do. So we say save games UI dot name is equal to cloud string array point zero. And the saved games UI dot age is equal to, remember we need to take this from a string into an integer. So we're gonna say int dot parse the cloud string array item one and that's it so we've now converted this back into name and this back into age okay so now that we finished that we just want to add in some logging so we can see how this is all working so we're going to say saved games ui dot output text dot text is equal to nothing at first just that clears it in case we're doing this multiple times and then save games ui dot output text dot text is going to be equal to my name is and we'll just add a plus save games ui dot name and then similar for our age as well so text plus equals my age is and then we'll just add save games ui dot age okay so that will give us our final age uh, name and age string in there so we can load that in. So now let's just put some quick logging in so that we can see each of the steps as they happen. So we'll start up here with our open save. We're going to say saved UI and we're going to call this our log text element. So our log text element is going to be equal to nothing at first. So we wipe it out, put it again, and we're going to say that open save is clicked. I'll just paste that in again here. And this is what happens when we are user is authenticated. Then we jump into our callback method. Same thing, but we are gonna say status successful, attempting to save. And then we'll do a similar thing here for our load. So we'll say attempting to load. And then we're gonna go into the callback for this one here. And we'll change this debug.log to our save games UI and we're just gonna say file successfully save to the cloud. And in this case, it will be file has failed to save to the cloud. 
And the last piece that we missed here is just to go up to our load callback and just say that load successful attempting to read data. Okay, so taking it from the top again, we open our save. We choose whether we're saving or loading with that. If we are saving, we attempt to commit our save data. And with that save data, we basically then just get a callback to say, yes, I successfully saved it or not. If we're loading, we then attempt to read the data. We get this load callback. The load callback basically just converts it into a string. And then that string prints out our, our name and age from the loaded data. Okay, we're gonna jump back into our scene now and we're just gonna hook up the last of this. So we need to add to this our save games UI panel. And in here, we need to know what our log text is. That's just our log text. Our output text is just our output text. Our name input field is our name input field. Age is age, obviously. And remember that on age, we just want to change this one to an integer. And on name, we want to change this one to just a, we'll call this alphanumeric, that's fine. Inside of here, we're going to add an onClick function from our GPGS manager. This one is going to be the saving of our game. So we'll say open save. And in this case, it is true because we are saving. And in our load game, it's the same method but it's this time false because we're loading instead of saving. So open save and we're not saving this time. Then we wanna to go to our input fields and we're going to scroll down to on value changed. We created two methods in our save games UI here for this. So save games UI and on value change for name because this is obviously the name and also the age as well. So add and save games panel, grab the UI, and then we're gonna take the age value. The one last thing we can't forget in here is that in the GPGS manager, we added this save games UI. And so I'll just drag that across there so it has a reference. Hey everyone, Future Flavin here. I just realized very quickly that when I was doing this age input field part uh, in my on value change, I was using name. So I've just updated this to say age input field. You would have got a, a, a type error when you tried to enter into that field. Okay, we're gonna get ready to build this one now. So I'm just gonna minimize this panel here, open up my home panel. And in my home panel, I'm just gonna create a button for save games. So we'll just rename that one save games button and change the text on it to save games. Inside of here, I just wanna give this the save games panel and set object to active. Okay, we can close down that one and go back to our sign in panel and build our project. That'll just be done going file, build, build settings. And I'll just call this one saved games. And from here, we'll move over to our phone and we'll get to see that it's working. It's going to sign us in. I'll just choose Flavian at Gmail. And that opens up our home panel and we have saved games here. Now I'm just gonna put my name in as Flavian. And my age is 29, so I will hit save, and we should see a log up the top right. It says we're authenticated, and then starts to attempt to save, uh, and then saves the file successfully. So I can now hit on the left-hand side this load button, and that will load from the cloud. You can see it's loading, and then it says, my name is Slavain, and my age is 29. And obviously it loads successfully. So I'm just going to sign out here, close the app, and in here, just going to get rid of any cache data for this. So I'll just clear data entirely. We can see that nothing's on there again. <laughs> Most people do this to prove that it's working, but to be honest, the way that we've written it, it has to load from the cloud anyway, because we don't actually post any local values at all. But I'm just gonna hit load just to show that when we load and we pull data back, it gives us our name again. We can obviously save over this with anything else and it would still just save a new value save to the cloud and then load again now there was one reason why this took so long to release and that was because i didn't realize that inside of play games and the first time i did this it didn't make me do this but for some reason inside of my settings there's a menu here called change account for games and this code tutorial GPGS was continually giving me 
a internal error followed by an authentication error. And for some reason that was due to this account not being set as the correct Flavane account. For some reason it was using my other email address. And when the two conflicted, I was just getting an error that would just not authenticate properly. I have no idea how this happened. And if this does happen to you, it might not be your fix, but there was no anything anywhere about it. So if that helps at least one person, um, you're welcome. And otherwise, uh, reach out on my Discord and let me know if you're running into issues with this because I've gone through so many triage steps for this, so. Alrighty. Okay, that wraps up this save tutorial video. I put a massive amount of effort into this video to get it done, so if this did help, please consider subscribing. If there's enough demand for it, I can also look at creating a tutorial on saving data with JSON rather than as a string. Uh, it's much better for more complicated games. I didn't want to tackle it in this video because it's already quite a long one. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon with another tutorial. See you guys.